Hey guys, welcome to my channel. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Mario. I've been your local real estate expert in South Florida since 2006. I focus on the finance side of things. My team focuses on the real estate side of things. And today we're going to be talking to Stan Garcia. He's the uh, creator producer for OS Films. He's an incredible content creator. He's going to give us some tips about how to improve our videos, our own videos, shooting a home and so forth. I really hope you find this helpful. So thank you for coming by and I hope this helps. Hey guys, so here we are with Stan Garcia. He is the creative producer for Oculus Squared Films. He's a good friend of mine and an amazing producer. So uh, thank you, man, for uh, spending some time on here with us today. So I have a million questions, right? So I have a million I, answers. I have a million answers. <laughs> so, you know, we, we've been working from home um, for about a month and a half now. And I know, uh, you know, you were kind enough to get on the phone with me and get on a video call and give me some tips on how to set up my my uh, home office here for shooting. So I kind of wanted to ask you some questions and some general tips for our agents or maybe our small business owners, just some, some ideas on how to improve their video shooting at home. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, yeah, it's definitely a time where people are ramping up their own uh, content creation. And it's actually a, a great thing for me also because I love when people get inspired, get creative and do their own content production. I generally handle very polished, more small business profile commercials, but for you to be producing your own content on the fly, I think is very important because you want to stay connected to your audience. So one of the, and, and that's kind of a segue into my, my first tip is, is to know your audience. I mean, we've all heard this before, but it's important for you to know your audience in terms of what information, how much value you can add to the product or service that they're seeking. And in, in your case, in real estate, there's a million questions. Anybody who's trying to buy a home for the first time, they don't understand the process. They're concerned about so many different things. So it's important to keep them informed and, and know what kind of questions they're asking generally. And that's, I think, one of the most important things to start with. Because another thing about creating content, I feel like people nowadays, they think that, oh, you know, content, you have to create content, you have to create content. And yes, it's important to have content out there because if you're being compared to a real estate agent or, or anybody else uh, who has more content on their website and you have less, they're going to be on that website longer because they're looking at their information. However, you want to be able to have valuable information. So I would say have five videos that are very informative and, and, and give value as opposed to 10 videos that is just about any random thing. So that's one of the things that I feel like is, is super important. And another thing that I would suggest is stay, is stay, um, is stay up on current events. Uh, anybody who, who sees, and it's, it's news basically, we, we, we hear something that's going on and we want, to, we want to produce some sort of content related to that. So if you, if you hear, like, so let's say, let's just use the pandemic as, as an example. There's a lot of, obviously there's financially, the whole entire country, not only the country, but the world has been affected financially. So any new home buyer has a lot of questions surrounding that. How has this pandemic affected the market in terms of homes. And that's a video that you can make to produce that because people know, oh, it's like they, they connected with it. Like, oh, this is current event. This is happening right now. Let me get an inform information based on what I'm looking towards getting into, which is maybe a home during this time. So definitely a, a good thing to, to remember. Yeah, and, and just to touch on that, actually, um, one of the things that, that, I've, that I've tried to do is to do, a, um, to do like a market, weekly market update uh, specifically when, how it relates to the, uh, changing, um, the changing guidelines or changing requirements for mortgages. I think it's, I've gotten really good feedback on that. I strongly advise, you know, any, um, anyone out there that's in, in the same industry, do the same for your audience. So I, I've been updating our, our, our audience with, you know, that the requirements for down payment, the requirements for income, uh, the additional requirements to, um, you know, how long they've been at the jobs, et cetera. So I've been updating, my audience with that. I've tried my best to stay up, up to date with, with current events, um, the ever changing current events that's, um, you know, happening it almost every day. So yeah, definitely. That's, that's one of the tips that I took on, uh, that I've been trying to do myself. So thank you for that. Yeah. Yeah, definitely important. And, and in terms of really 
being able to to deliver some of this messaging and, and speak on video. And I know that that's uh, that's primarily the thing that that restricts people from doing it. And because of what's going on right now and everybody's releasing content and everybody's just making their own videos, we understand that things don't have to look as polished anymore, especially if you're just trying to deliver some information. So even if maybe you're, maybe you're nervous about, you know, tripping up your words or, or not delivering the messaging correctly, but look, it's okay if you just hold a piece of paper and you just like read off some things, just, you know, write a script and just hold a piece of paper off the camera and just read off of it because, at the end of the day, it's really about the information that you're providing. So whether or not you're looking at the camera on the screen or just looking off to some information, it's okay. And, and that's, uh, that's just kind of a side point. My third, my, my third point, which I think is super important that we forget sometimes is, is don't forget to have fun. People, people like personality. You know, and, and I think that sometimes we, we end up uh, getting stiff. We, we end up feeling like we have to be all professional and deliver this messaging in a, in a really business type environment. But, you know, we're, for the most part, we're in our homes. So we're, that already is out the window. We're, we're, we already understand that, that we're creating content at home. So it's, it's not even like we're at the office anymore doing this. So don't forget to have fun and, and let your personality come out a little bit in some way. And even if it's as simple as maybe having some some drawing or some poster or something in the background that that is your personality exactly and that's that's exactly why you know i, I, I painted actually, that with i'm so proud of this you know you see? <laughs> well that actually and that's and that's endearing like that's really nice to to know oh you you painted that so that that also gives a, a personal touch to it and yeah. people really like that stuff and then know? of course the greatest baseball team of of ever right it's the i have the uh, fenway park blueprint right here so there you go you know yeah. it's <laughs> yeah. And, and that's, and, and, and again, you, you just touched on something that's important. That's, you know, what you have in your background is an opportunity to show your personality a little bit without saying it. Like I'm, I'm a big time cyclist and, it, and it's a way that you could connect maybe with a client or your audience. It's like, if they see a, a nice bike in the background and then there's a, a person who's a cyclist in, in the audience, that's a way to connect with them. And like, Oh, he's into cycling. And it's important to, to be able to do those things. Sometimes people think, you know, they need to have a completely white background or I've been seeing a lot of like uh, green screen and, and all of these virtual backgrounds. I'm a little bit on the fence on that still. I, I don't know if I like people doing virtual backgrounds. It, it, I think sometimes if it's done incorrectly, it could be distracting because, you know, the background is kind of like trying to, to, you know, mask out the, the chair yeah. or like something. And there's just weird and that tends to be distracting. Now I've been on some virtual meetings where people do go the length and they get a green screen and they have the proper lighting and then it's super clean. Like there's like a, the universe in the background. And I, I think depending on the situation, it's okay, but sure. it's, it's, you know. When, I mean, when would it, when would it be okay then? I mean, what's the situation that, Hey, let me pop a virtual background in the back. Cause you we know can what do I, it here in, in zoom, right? Like I can go in and, and, and get a, yeah. let me see if I can show you, but well, you know, but let me see if I can show our audience, right? So when is it, when is it a good idea to do that? I think, I, I think if, it's, if, if, if you can use it as, as kind of a way to maybe even break the ice, if it's a way for you to break the ice going into a, a conversation or, or a meeting, I think that it could be usable or also just informative. I've seen, I was, I'm part of a, a Toastmasters group, which is to help uh, improve yourself as a public speaker. And the, we give, we give uh, presentations and one of the speakers used the background as uh, informative. Though he was talking about something related to, to charts or, or graphs and he put that graph in the background. So he was able to reference it almost like you would uh, a projector except it was like behind nice. him and then he used it like he just, he thought about it and then he, he just pointed behind him uh, and he figured out, you know, the reversal of it or however, and then he just pointed and it was very, and it was cool. It was a nice touch to the presentation. So I, I think it depends on the situation really. Cool, man. And, and then um, you mentioned something um, at the very beginning, you said it, it's better to have five good videos instead of like 10, just, you know, random things. What would be, or I guess, uh, what should we include in those five videos, right? Those good videos per se. Well, and also just on that too, keep them short, especially if you're going to, you know, we already kind of know this, anything over, anything over a minute, especially if you're, you're releasing content on Instagram, anything over a minute is, is too long. And then if you go over a minute, then you have to put it on IGTV and then it just, it changes the whole thing. So I would definitely suggest to keep your videos short.
But in terms of the content, it's, it's really, if you're producing informative videos, I would number one, also remember your background, like just move around and so that the video background doesn't look exactly the same every single time. And also if you're doing those five videos in one sitting, I would suggest for you to change your shirt, uh, <laughs> you know, because then it's just going to look in terms of how they see the little thumbnail, sure. it's going to look like the same video. So gotcha. just change your shirt and maybe even try to change the, the background. But in terms of, of the information, that really depends on what, what the client is looking for, what you're, what you're trying to sell or, or produce at that, at that moment, really. So that, that's, that changes, but it's important definitely to keep it, to keep it as, as, uh, as concise and as, and as together as possible. Yeah. And, and when, um, when someone's starting to shoot their own content, uh, at home, right. Do you suggest using like an, an iPhone upgrading cameras? What do you suggest for, for equipment? Well, I would, I would suggest, so I'm using, I, I have a little lavalier mic right here. Mm -hmm. Audio, it, it, it's almost, it almost doesn't matter nowadays. Like most of the video cameras on your phones, on your laptops, they're pretty good, but audio is still always been a problem. So I would, you can use an iPhone, but if you have yourself a little microphone attached to the iPhone, it'll greatly improve the video. And I highly suggest, I highly suggest keeping, keeping audio quality at the, at the top of your mind in terms of, of producing video, super, super important. But again, yeah, you could produce really good videos with an iPhone. As a matter of fact, I've been hired before to, to film a business conference with an iPhone. They've specifically asked for an iPhone because they wanted it to still have that look like just very like, Hey, here's, you know, a quick interview off of an iPhone, not anything too polished because then it also, I think that what happens with, with that is that, it makes the viewer feel like they have to watch this like super polished, well thought out video. And it's like, Oh, I don't have time to watch that. But if gotcha. it's like a quick phone video, it's like, Oh, this is probably a quick thing. And I think that that's what the psychology of it is because lately I've been hearing a lot of people just wanting to use iPhones to film some content at an event or whatever it may be. But definitely you can go iPhone these days. As a matter of fact, I've, I've done uh, promotional content for myself with an iPhone. Yeah, so definitely focus more on sound quality rather than upgrading like equipment to camera, like an expensive camera or something like that, right? Yeah, and also, and, and then if you're going to go the, ro the route of an iPhone, I would highly suggest some sort of a cell phone tripod or something that holds it because having, holding it all the time, that gets a little annoying. Like, and also, uh, you want to free up your hands. Like a stabilizer also, right, would help, like... Yeah, it, yeah, it definitely. If you want to, yeah, it, now that you mentioned a the stabilizer, they're, they're really good uh, cell phone stabilizers that are great if you are going to be walking around or moving because that also, that also adds a, a, an element of, of interest when you're watching a video of somebody moving or walking towards somewhere. It's like, oh, where are they going? So it keeps you engaged a little more. So that's why it's always, it's always nice to, to have that element. Yeah, and, and I bought my, um, my iPhone stabilizer in Amazon for like 80 bucks man. And it's amazing. The difference that it makes when you're walking around, right? Because when you're walking with, with holding it in your hand, it goes up and down with a stabilizer. It's right there. Yeah. It's pretty sweet. It was like the best 70, 80 bucks I spent <laughs> on Amazon. Yeah. And then to, um, for my sound, I bought this blue Yeti that you see here. Right. And then I bought this little thing that's like 10 bucks too. Yeah. It's a pop filter. Yeah. It's yeah. great. It's good to have that. So my sound quality increased uh, improved uh, significantly when I bought this thing. Uh, it cost me 120 bucks, I think on Amazon also. Mm -hmm. And the difference in sound was phenomenal, right? So, um, definitely look into one of these mics. If you're filming at home, I would say, and then also a stabilizer. So, uh, one of the ideas that we discussed with our, with our teams, our agents, you know, some of the small business owners is, uh, you know, shoot video in your business now, right? What is going on in your business? Uh, some of the agents have shot uh, videos of their like virtual walkthroughs per se, right? So they've taken a, a, a walk around the house, they've shown video and should, should they focus more? Um, what should they focus on there? I guess is my question, right? Is it more of a, a one loop uncut shot of the whole property or should they do like small spurts of like each rooms, et cetera? Well, in and, and the of, same and, and the same question goes for business owners, right? If you're shooting like what's going on in my business today, should it be like one long shot or should they do like small cuts? 
That, that's a good question because it, it really ends up being a question for post-production in terms of editing. The name of the game is to be able to get this content out smooth and clean and with as little headaches as possible. Now, when you get into editing video and doing different segments, then it gets a little complicated because now you have to bring the content into an editing program and you have to chop it up. Now, if you have an interest in that, I say go for it 100% because then it will definitely improve the quality of your video. If you don't want to deal with having to learn a program and having to, to get into a program and, and figure out how to edit all of the different scenes and the little different rooms in the house together or different areas of your business, then I would suggest that you try your best to even, even just practice a couple of runs. If you do, you would, you would 100% have to get a stabilizer. As you mentioned, Mario, you have yep. to get one of those stabilizers if you're gonna be walking around showing any content to anybody through video on a phone. So you could almost just do it walking around and just learn how to just do it smooth. But also you would have to be, you should be giving some commentary as well while, the, while you're doing it. So while you're, while you're actually recording the videos, you should be giving commentary on each room or, or on, on each area of the business or whatever it may be. So then that way it's like you're showing the images and then there's also the voiceover. Now, I think even just bringing it into some sort of uh, editing program and most pretty much all computers come with an, a video editing program, a very basic video editing program that is super simple to understand. It's, it's generally you just bring in the video clip onto what is a timeline, you bring in maybe a, a song. I highly suggest using some sort of music or something very low. And, and then basically you put it together and then you, you, you export it out of the program. And then that way you're, you're ready to edit. But uh, on, I'm, on Mac computers and Apple computers, it's iMovie. And I'm not 100% sure what Windows because I haven't used Windows in a long time, but I'm pretty sure it has it. And that, and that kind of stuff, also in terms of the information that you can look for it, on, on YouTube, there's a million tutorials uh, on that. But if you want to get more into editing, you could definitely reach out to me because and then I use a more a higher end program that you can do so many more things with. So if, if we have... Um we have a team of agents, we have, you know, small business owners, can they shoot their own content and send it over to your team for editing? Is this something that you guys do? Yeah, we could, we could do that. We could do that. Um, yeah, as, as long as, and I would, I would definitely, I would like to be involved in the conversation before the filming so that I could kind of give them tips on how to film it the best because it makes it easier for post-production. Like I said, because if there's a lot of errors or mistakes, there may be some things that we can't fix in post. So I want to make sure that the video is shot as best as possible so that we can handle it. Makes sense. And, and um, kind of a technical question, right? How, do, so it, how does 4K stack up versus 1080p? And do we need 4K or are we okay with 1080p? Well, yeah. At, I, at the end of the day, where it ends up is what's most important. So if it ends up on your cell phone or even just on the internet, it's not going to be displayed in 4K. YouTube has a 4K option, but that's also people who have the YouTube app on their uh, TV and they're watching 4K videos on their TV. Because even if you watch a 4K video on your phone, it still resizes to, to fit you know, the resolution on your phone, which is 1920, 1080. And the, the difference in quality is not huge. And the, the drawback is the file sizes of 4K and having to deal with a 4K file. So, I wouldn't, I mean, it really, I, I wouldn't suggest it. I don't think it's necessary, really. Mm -hmm. uh, however, however, if you're, if you're doing very polished videos of, with really good lighting of, of the homes or of the business or those kind of things, yes. But if it's just like a home video, I don't really think that it's necessary. So, so it's okay, 1080p on an iPhone, shoot it on the go. You need a stabilizer. You need some kind of, some kind of microphone so you have good sound and you have your your commentary as you're walking around properties, et cetera. Um, any other tips that you think would be really helpful for, for our um, agents out there, for mortgage brokers, small business owners? I think, I think it's important to make a plan also. I think sometimes people forget to, to whenever they have an idea for something, just make sure to write it down at that moment or, or put it somewhere in your notes or, to, to, to plan out some video content because 
I think that what, what ends up happening with a lot of people is that they have this idea, but then they think, oh, but then I have to do this after this and after this. And all, they think of all the steps that they have to do after that. But just write it down. Maybe you're not ready to do it at that moment. But if you had a good idea for creating content or something that can help you and your business, then why not just save it at least and have it, you know, have it there in your pocket for later? Because it's, it's important because especially with, with, with creating videos, I mean, you could be walking around and you see something that gives you an idea for like a great video for content for yourself, but then you don't write it down. You don't take the steps to, to make it happen for yourself. And then it, you forget it and it's gone. So I would just suggest to, to make a plan for the type of video content that you want to be releasing even up to two or three weeks from now. And, and one of the things that, uh, that really helped me and it was one of your tips was to, to kind of like map out your, your shoots, right? One of the, one of the first, uh, one of the first shoots that we did, or you guys did for us, uh, we, we were having a conversation before we started shooting and you said that it's so important for you to just like write down the steps that you're taking to shoot, like mm -hmm. write down the ideas of like the B roll, right? Like mm -hmm. the, that footage that you can just insert into, into the, the frames later on, like, uh, man, it helped me so, so much planning that out beforehand so that once I got to wherever it is that I was going to shoot, I knew what I was going to do. Right. And, um, yeah. another thing that really, really helped me, and I don't think you've mentioned it is that if you're shooting at home, like we are here, that you should have a setup ready to go. Mm -hmm. Right. Because there's been times that I'm on, on, on my emails and I'm replying and then I get an idea for a video, a story for Instagram, a story for Facebook. I, if I'm not set up, there's no way I'm going to, you know, stop and then set up my laptop, set up my microphone. There's no way to do that. By that time, yeah. I'm like, you know what? I just don't want to do it anymore. Mm -hmm. So having, having your, your setup ready to go is so important. It's, it's like a, a must do at least, at least on my book. Right. Yeah. Very, very important. And even, even just having, trying to get your setup close to a window, if you're doing a lot of your videos in the daytime, having that window light come in. I mean, this is window light coming in right yeah, here. This is, this is window light coming in too. You, yeah. you asked me face a window, so I'm facing a window here. Yeah. And you don't really have to do anything. And I could show you because my, my setup is actually very compact because I have another setup with all the lighting and everything just in a, in a different part mm -hmm. of my apartment. Um, but in the daytime, I, I really, cause that's all lighting and all a whole thing. But in the daytime, I just like to be out here and by the window, but basically, and it's important. I could just show you right now real quick is if you end up, if you end up even this way. Yeah, we can see you. I mean, look how much that changes. And sometimes people don't even <laughs> think about that. And they're just like, Oh, I want them to see the view in the background. You know, like my, but it's like, no, you can't do that. And then even if you go, even if you go like sideways, you see that? Yeah. You're like, you're thinking, Oh, the, the wind, the light from the window is, but it, but it's not, it's not really good. And then see and then there is like perfect. See, and it, that's as simple as just being in front of the window. That's it. Now I have, I have a very small table and a little chair that I set up because when I'm ready to, when I'm ready to go and I want to be by the window, I could just do it. So I, I yeah. just got this little table here. See? Yeah. And then also I put it, I put it on books. I put it on books because it's, it's nice to be in an eye line with, with it's, it's like a, it's almost like in movies. You always see generally when people talk to each other, they're always the eye line. Yeah. So if I take the books off and a lot of people don't think about this, but it's just a little added something that's nice, you know, to think about. See, if I do this, then, then this is what you're looking at. I'm looking at your ceiling. You see, yeah, and it's, just, <laughs> the bottom it's, of it. <laughs> it's weird. It's like different than, than being, you know, at eye level. So that's another kind of like freebie right there. Uh, just always try to try to get your setup at eye level with yourself. And I see that you, you're on like a standing desk or something. Yeah, I, 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 I'm on my computer like 90% of the day. So I bought a standing desk. Yeah. It was like 140 bucks, I think on Amazon. It was amazing. And not even, man, I think it was like 120 bucks on Amazon. It's been awesome. But then I also, because if I stand up, my laptop is, is down here. Like, right. So I have to prop it up just like you. It's not on books. It's on, it's on a little um, thing I, I have. It's essentially like yeah. books. So it props up my, my I, uh, laptop so that I can be at eye level. Yeah. I actually ordered and there's a, so there's those stands and I, I ordered a stand that is just a laptop holder so I could stand it and, and it's adjustable yeah. height. 
So I, I ordered that because since I'm going to be doing this a lot more, I'm, I started ordering more things. And that's another, <laughs> another thing that it's important to think about right now. It's like, you, you, you know, these kind of things are investment for the long term. And it's, I mean, we're, we're going to be in this for a little bit. And I think even coming, coming back from this, people are going to be more comfortable cre uh, virtual meetings and creating videos at home. Yeah. So why not just set yourself up for it long term? Yeah. And that's, that was one of the, um, one of the reasons I bought this microphone, right? Because uh, I, I wasn't so much into like YouTube and doing things on social media and things like that, but I had to be, I couldn't meet anyone. I, I had to go on zoom. I had to go on, you know, go to meetings and my sound off of like the, the laptop sound was just terrible. It would pick up everything around me. Like somebody yeah. will honk outside and then you hear it in my sound. Yeah. So I, I said, you know what, I'm, I'm going to buy, I'm going to make the investment 120 bucks. It's not that bad. And then I bought, you know, the arm and, and, and this thing, the total thing was probably maybe 150, 160, right? Mm -hmm. But now I have significantly better sound and any video that I shoot, this is it. And, right. you know, and I can kind of clamp it off here and take it with me if I need to. So if I need to shoot a video in my office, I can just grab and go. It's not, mm -hmm. you know, it's not too complicated to go. So, yeah, um, and it also, it also tells your clients or potential clients like, Hey, th this guy or this person cares about what they're doing and, and how they're delivering their messaging. And, and it just, it's added value. Added value. Yeah, man. Yeah. So are there any, um, any final tips that you can give us the, um, the very novice content creators to, um, to kind of focus on? I know I have my, I have my microphone set up to clean sound. We talked about that. I set up my home office. I can't get rid of this thing up here. Otherwise I, <laughs> I get too hot. I don't know what I can put up there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but other than that, I've set up my office, you know, to your advice, um, anything, anything else that you think that could be useful for, for us? I would just say, start, you know, just start like, that's it. A lot of times we, we get into our head about how to get going and all the things that we need, but, but just start either, either write down a few things that you want to start getting for yourself or think about an area. Actually, that's probably the most important is think about an area in your home that you can redesign and, and set up. So, and that's basically, so you'd start in your home with an area for yourself that you want to, that you want to redesign or set up to just be able to walk into and start creating content. So man, Hey, Stan, uh, thank you so much, man. And actually, before we go, I wanted just to brag a little bit about you. I can just mention some of the names, some of the companies that you've um, done work for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, you, so you want me to? Yeah, yeah, please do it. You. Well, I've, I mean, off the top of my head, it's so. So we know, we know Carnival, right? You so yeah, it. oh yeah, Carnival, Royal Caribbean. Well, I, so I do a lot of travel, travel work. Uh, so I, I've done World Caribbean and uh, Crystal Cruise Ships. Actually, Crystal Cruise Ships, which is a higher-end uh, cruising company, they're they're still my ongoing client, and thankfully they they still have content to produce because they're re they're releasing messaging to their employees on a, on a global level. So and their headquarters is in Miami. So I, I do a lot of work with them. Uh, Good, I've done work nice. for for Popeyes. Uh, just a lot of. So many, so many major brands. I can't even think of them right now, but yeah, there, there's been, there's been some work and I've been thankful. And, and now there's been a little bit of a shift, right? I'm, I'm, I'm learning to help people on, on, a, on a smaller scale, create videos for themselves, which I'm, I'm taking a lot of joy in. Yeah. And, and let me tell you your, your advice, your knowledge is, is like, man, it's priceless. I, you know, thank you so much. I know you set up this whole thing for me. Uh, you've helped me with the the lighting, you know, the, the sound and all of that stuff. So I really, really appreciate that. And of course, you've shot a few videos for us. Um, and, you know, it's professional, uh, professional uh, shooting. It's, um, it's amazing, man. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, can we find any of your content or uh, your previous uh, or your other shoots online or on YouTube anywhere? Yeah, if you go to osfilms.work, osfilms.work w o r k then that's a website that'll lead you into the rest of the videos and everything that i've done but but please feel free to reach out directly to me and and mario can uh provide my email and, and contact information to anybody that wants to to go a little further because i could actually put together a a, a list of items that maybe depending on your budget that maybe you want to get it's some sort of lighting a microphone 
maybe just an improved camera or, or things along that nature. Cool, man. Appreciate it. I'll, I'll put your contact info at the uh, description of the video. So if anyone wants to reach out to you, uh, they can reach out to you directly or otherwise, obviously, you know, you could always reach out to me and um, I'll put you guys in contact. So Stan, man, appreciate it. Thank you so much. Likewise. Thank you, Mar. Appreciate you it. it. Bye guys. Bye-bye.